In this video, we're going to discuss how to calculate the income elasticity of demand. So income elasticity of demand measures how your demand for a good or service changes as your income goes up or down. So as you become wealthier or poorer, what happens, for example, to your demand for candy? So we can calculate it with this formula here, where we take the percentage change in the quantity demanded, let's say the percentage change in the quantity of candy that you demand, divided by the percentage change in your income that occurs. So let's say, for example, that your income were to go up 10%, and you had a corresponding percentage change in the quantity demanded of candy of 50%. So if your income goes up by 10%, the amount of candy that you're demanding, the quantity goes up by 50%. So we'd say your income elasticity of demand is five. And if you're wondering how do we calculate the numerator and the denominator, well, to get the percentage change in quantity demanded, we take the change in the quantity demanded, so the change in the quantity of candy that you're demanding, divided by the average quantity demanded. And to get the denominator, the percentage change in income, we take the actual change in your income divided by your average income. Now, I know that's a little abstract, so let's go into an example and I'll show you with some actual numbers. So let's say that you make $200 a month, so your income is $200 a month that you get uh, from working as a clown at children's parties, but then a YouTube video of you getting hit by a car while wearing your clown suit, it goes viral. People feel bad that this clown was just out walking and, and got hit by a car. People feel bad for you. They send you donations. They set up a GoFundMe site. And now your income has increased to $350 a month. So now you have become wealthier. You've got more income. And so that's going to change how you the quantity that you demand of certain items. And so let's think about the food that you eat. Let's say that you eat, uh, you eat rice, you eat pasta, and you eat chocolate bars, okay? So when your income was $200 a month, you demanded, let's say, 10 bags of rice, eight, eight boxes of pasta, and two chocolate bars. That, that was what your demand was. But now that your income is $350 a month, you're only demanding five bags of rice, so your demand for rice has actually gone down. You're eating less rice, but two additional boxes of pasta you're demanding, but you're demanding 13 more bars of chocolate, okay? And so you can already see that, okay, the income went up, right? Your income nearly doubled, and you're eating less rice, more pasta, and a lot more chocolate. And what we can do is we can calculate the income elasticity of demand for each of the items, right? So again, remember that the income elasticity of demand, what it is, is we're gonna put, let me just put a little abbreviation here. So you can think of it as the percentage change, I'll just have a triangle for delta for change, in the quantity demanded, I'll just put a little, little thing here, and then divided by the percentage change in income. I'll just abbreviate INC, okay? Now remember, the, the formula was given at the beginning of the video, I just wanted to show you, here's a quick little thing. So what we had to do to calculate the percentage change in quantity demanded is we have to do the actual change in demand, which is we went from 10 to five. So it was negative five. Okay, so that's gonna be, let me change colors. So negative five, but then we need to divide that by the average quantity demanded, which is 10 plus five divided by two. So that's 7.5. Okay, so that's gonna be our numerator. That's gonna be, that's gonna give us the percentage change in quantity demanded. And I, I can actually, I'll just calculate that right now. So that's negative 66.7%. Actually, this is negative five divided by 7.5 times 100. So we're gonna multiply everything here by 100 to get it to a percentage from a proportion, okay? Now in our denominator, in our denominator, we got the percentage change in income. And so we're gonna take, we, what happened here? Well, we had 200 to 350. So we went up by 150. We went up by 150. That's our actual change in income, but then we have to divide it by the average income. The average income is 200 plus 350 divided by two, which is 275. And that's gonna be the same. This, this percentage change in income, which is 54.5%, that's gonna be the same for each of these items because your, your income changes the same for every item. What's gonna change is the percent of change in quantity demanded, okay? So now 
let's think about and, and, and we can go ahead let me just finish this out here so that is going to give you negative negative 1.22 negative 1.22 and so we will say that demand for this good we will call that inferior demand for this good is inferior an inferior what, what this good is an inferior good means that as your income goes up you actually buy less of this good that's what we mean when we say that this is an inferior good okay now with pasta with pasta we had we had an increase right so we can tell right away it's not not going to be an inferior good but now we need to calculate out we need to calculate out here our formula so the percentage change in quantity demanded is going to be we're going to have two which is our increase our change in demand divided by our average um, demanded right so eight, 8 plus 10 is 18 divided by 2 is 9 okay now in the denominator again we have the exact same thing 150 divided by 275 because the income has not changed so we have 22.2 percent remember we multiply everything by 100 to get a percentage divided by 54.5 percent and that's going to give us that's going to give us 0 0.41 0 0.41 and so we would say that this is a normal good and when we say normal good what we mean is if your income goes up you become wealthier you buy more of the good we say that's normal okay so it's a normal good and we'd say it's normal and inelastic inelastic because a one percent increase in your income it increases demand for the good but by less than one percent right so 0 0.41 Okay. Now with the chocolate, we see that, wow, the chocolate went from 2 to 15. So your chocolate, you, you really, you're a clown that really likes chocolate. So we're going to have a big change here. And so we're going to have 13 is our actual change in the chocolate bars and the change in demand divided by the average demanded, which is 8. And then all of that, and again, we take the 150 divided by 275. So what do we have? We have 152.9% increase in the numerator, and then we have 54.5% in the denominator. And so if we calculate that out, that gives us 2.8 income elasticity of demand. And so it is a normal good. It is a normal good, but demand, it's a normal elastic good. Okay, so we've got, let's just do a quick review. So for the rice for the rice we said that it is an inferior good and we know even if you didn't know that oh okay well people buy less rice as they become wealthier they start buying oh fancy things like chocolate even if you didn't know that if you just look at the income elasticity of demand it's negative anytime the income elasticity of demand is a negative number that means that it is an inferior good okay so you know that now with the pasta, the pasta is a normal good because the income elasticity demand is positive. But it's inelastic because it's positive and less than one. Okay, so if, if income elasticity demand is positive but less than one, then you say the good is normal and, and inelastic. It's a normal inelastic good. Chocolate is different. Chocolate a 1% increase brings more than a 1% increase in the, or, or increase, a 1% increase in income brings more than a 1% increase in the quantity demanded for chocolate, right? Your income goes up a little bit, your demand for chocolate goes up a lot. And so therefore we say that chocolate is a normal, normal elastic good. Look at it, it's a 2.8 is its income elasticity demands higher than one. So it's a normal elastic good.